difference right here because when you look at the whole United States of America, when you want to look to the great leaders that are rising, that are pointing the way to the future, you look to the governor of the great state of Michigan. Yeah. Michigan the other day to come down because Chuck Schumer called her and we were having our retreat and here we have, we, we've got, I don't know if you all know this, but the mission the mission, if you all accept it, is not just to beat Donald Trump, that's important, not just to make Joe Biden president but there's another guy that I want to send way back into the bad adventures and make sure you talk. We re elect Gary Peters. Yeah. We need a speaker about how to win in purple states like Arizona and Colorado. The person he called to speak to the entire delegation of Democratic senators was your governor. I want to thank you. Courage. 
he found out courage is just those days where you just get up in the morning and say, I'm going to put on my clothes and get outside the door. Wow. I sat there and listened to him and saw a connection as I we were driving here as Amanda comes from a community that knows wretchedness and pain, that knows hurt and agony, but still finds a way to keep going anyway. Now I understand why in the black community who knows the blues, we see in him a brother. And I'll tell you this, I think Clyburn in the last Congressional Black Caucus meeting, he may have whispered in my ear and says, Joe, honorary black man. <laughs> so I want to end with somebody else that touched me like he just touched me in the car ride. Because it's all about heart. Don't make this decision just with your head. Make it with your heart. This is about our values. This is about our virtue. This is about a word that, that we don't talk about enough in our public spaces. King touched upon that when he said that we must create a beloved community. The word I simply say it comes from the word patriotism. Patriotism is love of country, but you cannot love your country unless you love your fellow countrymen and women. And love, and I can tell you right now, love is not sentimentality. Love is sacrifice and service. It's living a life that no matter how much God leaves you down, you still stand up, not just for yourself, but for others. And so my greatest mentor in life was the was the, one of the greatest tenant organizers in all of Newark, a, a, a hero, took me to my earliest tenant meetings, and I'll tell you, they could have lasted for hours, but everyone who would get up to the microphone, he would look at them as if they're the first person to ever speak. Like they were the only person in the room, no matter how little you had in your pocket, no matter how struggling you were, what the background you have, this man would look at you and see your dignity and see your soul. I'll tell you, he got older. I, he helped me get elected to the city council, helped me get elected to the mayor, because he, he saw in me things I didn't see in myself. But as he got older, his eyesight went. Then he eventually was in hospice. And what I want to share with you as I prepare to bring Joe to the stage is, and I haven't told him this, but he is a living embodiment of this man's last words to me. You see, when I got to his hospice room, these home health care, these, these hospice workers, God bless all healthcare professionals. Yeah. They worked so hard. They paid so little. They told me that this would be the last time I see him alive, that he would go soon, and, and that he couldn't speak. He was having trouble with speaking, and his eyesight had already gone. And I walked in the room, and there he was in his hospice bed. And I said, Frank, his name was Frank Hutchins. I said, Frank, it's Corey. As I walked to the bed, and, and he, I know he couldn't see, but he goes, I, I see you. He spoke, I didn't think he could speak, and I sat in his bed and just told him how much I loved him, told him I would have never gotten into politics, told him we didn't talk policy, we didn't talk, talk, talk about the issues of the day, we talked about, I talked to him about the values that he passed upon to me. But it was time to go, I was mayor of the city, busy and had to go, and, and I kissed him on the forehead, I kissed him on the cheek, I held him knowing it might be the last time I see him alive, and then I said to him, Frank, I love you. And as I got up, I saw him struggling again to force out these words. He said to me, I love you. I walked out of his room and never saw him alive again. He soon passed away. My friends, we are at a point in America where we see hate and division deepening in our society. Where we have this severed sense of belonging, where we don't feel that common cause and common purpose, where we don't understand that we are intricately woven in a common garment of destiny, as our ancestors said. And what I love about this man, why I am standing on this stage right now, is because of those words of my mentor that he embodies. I see you, I love you. I see you, I love you. I see you, veteran, who comes home to the home of the brave, but is still homeless. I see you. I love you. I see you, children, who are in fear because we run more drills for shelter in place than we do fire drills in our public schools. I see you. I love you. I see you, person sitting in jail, where we still, today in America, have a society that, as Brian Stevenson says, treats you better if you're rich and guilty than if you're poor and innocent. I see you, and I love you. It is time that we have a president that shows the best of our values, who has been able to restore dignity to the highest office in the land, but will see us all and see the truth that this is the truth of America. When our founders wrote those words, we must mutually pledge 
the end of the Declaration of Independence, we must mutually pledge our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. That sacred honor that we've pledged to ourselves has been eroded, has been demeaned, has been degraded. And now is the time where man has not come up the easy way. He's gone up the rough side of the mountain. He was not dealt a great hand of cards, but he knows of struggle, and that struggle, that pain, that hurt, we know that God does not judge you by how perfect you are, but by how many scars that you have. Amen. And the beautiful story of this campaign, y'all, is that people counted it out. People counted him out. They looked down upon him. But I'm going to tell you right now with the words of another great black poet who simply said, you may try to write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You may trod me into the very dirt, but still like dust. I rise. I rise. When you rise with me for Joe Biden.